optic system design. Then I will briefly discuss three image modality with some ZMAX example. To design a medical imaging system, you will know, uh, you will need to understand the mechanism for each image modality. So on this slide show that when we illuminate the tissue, some of the light transmits through the tissue tissue without scattering. Most of the transmit light goes through more than one scattering event. Some of the light um, is backscatter with one or more um, scattering events. Few percent of the light reflect from the tissue surface, uh, which is a spectral reflection. The rest of the light will be absorbed by the tissue. The energy is either transferred to heat or excite the fluorescence from the tissue or from the conscious agent through one or more photon absorption. All these phenomena has been used have been used in biomedical imaging. For example, fluorescent imaging, confocal, optical coherence, tomography, or the multimodal multi-photon imaging. Spectrum is one of the most important parameters in biomedical imaging. Also, it is one of the first few parameters you need to determine when you design an optic system. This figure shows the absorption coefficient of different components in, in the tissue as a function of the wavelength. Absorption uh, in tissue is dominated by protein and DNA in a UV range by water in, in a uh, infrared, um, by hemoglobin uh, melanin in a, in a visible. Because of the low absorption in near infrared region, this window is often caused by biology window. Most of the imaging system use the uh, wavelength in this range, range from visible to near infrared, for example, 1.5 micron. Tissue is part of the optic system. So we will need to know its reflective index when we design an optic system. Typically, we use the uh, 1.33, which is similar to the reflective index of the water as the index, reflective index of the tissue. However, as you can see from this slide, the reflective index varies a lot from tissue to tissue. For example, nucleus is about 1.4 and uh, Melanie is about 1.6. So also I show on uh, this uh, figure, so the reflective index is also a function of the wavelength. So this slide uh, tells us that uh, if you want to design an optic system, you need to know the property of the tissue you want to target. Um, also because tissue is uh, in an optical path, uh, in addition to the reflective index, we need to understand that tissue is not flat, and tissue is compound. It moves involuntarily and voluntarily. So if you want to design a very good uh, uh, system with high resolution, your, uh, your optic system should be better than the required resolution. Um, also, if a tube or like uh, some um, part touch the tissue, tissue will have a displacement. So as shown in this figure, you can see so there's a displacement. Even you put a window layer, if window is not thick enough, thick enough, you can still see the slightly uh, slight um, displacement. So this you will have to consider in um, design your optic system. So again, the tissue is part of the optic system. So we need to understand its impact in the system performance. Even you design a, like a perfect uh, system, but when you scan in, into the tissue, the tissue will introduce the switch operation, just like the optic plate. The tissue also scatter the line as a diffuse, as you can see from this, this uh, figure. So even you have a great system, the spot size is much larger due to the scattering. Tissue also distorts the wavelength as a base element due to the surface topography 
also a respect index in homogeneity. So that will decrease the system performance. So right now, let's discuss the um, light microscopy. We, I was going to show you some of the uh, ZMAX example. Microscopy is uh, the most common optic system in biomedical imaging. Why the microscope was invented 400 years ago, the principle is the same. The only recent difference between the modern microscope and the traditional microscope is the objective. Modern objective is infinity constant, which means the image plane is in uh, is in infinity. So we need to have a tube lens to focus the light, focus the image into the uh, intermediate image plane for camera or for IT. Um, to design an uh, objective, so we need to know the pneumatic extra, field of view, walking distance, as well as the degree of the ablation collection. The objective are grouped into the few, few categories based on the collection of the ablation. With ablation, chromatic ablation, and field curvature. When we need to have a better ablation collection, as you can see from these three uh, images, the objective become more and more complicated. So as a general rule, so if we want to increase the numeric extra, so one way to do it is to add more element in front of the um, first lens. When you add all these elements, you need to control the uh, uh, Slick ablation and coma. You don't want to have a large slick ablation and coma from, from this element. So this, the surface of the element here should meet condition. So here is a typical microscopic objective. So there are three groups. Each group contributes differently. So for a real group, so it's most often used for field culture collection. So if you don't need uh, collect a field curvature, uh, you may not need this group. So now uh, let's uh, just, uh, show some uh, ZMAX example. So this is the example of a uh, low power objective. Only a uh, sim simple double is used. So as you can see here, so the actual is uh, away from objective and the reason is to create a telecentric condition. So for the old type of the uh, microscope objective, you don't usually telecentric is not uh, required, but if you want to have a better performance, so it's good to have a telecentric in a um, tissue side. Uh, in order to uh, control the telecentricity, so you can uh, control a uh, chief angle, as you can see here, in a many function, you can put a, a, like a small weight on, on each um, like opener to control the uh, chief angle. As you can see here, for this design, the chief angle is very small, only less than 0 0.05 degree. So um, here is the um, field curvature, uh, like an RMS uh, zero ratio. As you can see here, uh, it is not a diffraction limit performance, but you can see uh, for simple objective, that's sufficient. So another example is to um, the high power objective. So you need to have a, a high numeric aperture, for example, for this, this example. So you add more element uh, in, in front of this um, um, double it. So increase the numeric aperture. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, so you don't want to uh, you don't want the uh, front surface to introduce the large slit ablation and coma. So one way to check um, so uh, the the contribution of the each surface is from uh, so there so there um, diagram. This is a very useful function. So you can check the contribution from each surface. So for this this example, I also control the uh, um, Chief angle, as you can see here, is almost zero. So if uh, if you uh, check the um, RMS uh, zero ratio, you can see this is objective is not where uh, ablation is not working. Right. So you need to you need to further optimize the system.
here is another example. So, so for previous example, as you can see, so the, we didn't minimize the chromatic aberration, as you can see from, from the shift of different color. This is another example with the uh, red group to minimize the field curvature. So you can see clearly from this, um, from this figure, so the performance that is very good like, to have a um, field curvature uh, very small. And um, also you can see the, uh, so there, con the diagram, the contribution of each surface on one uh, application. For example, like split operation, you can see um, like uh, uh, each surface contribute different, differently, but they compensate each other. And if you look at MTF, it's, uh, it's pretty good, but of course you need to, uh, still need to improve it for uh, manufacture. So, and I also, um, the control the chief angle for, for this example. So, for the microscopic objective, the complexity is determined by your requirement on a chromatic aberration control, split aberration, and field curvature. So, let's back to the, to the slides. So, the next topic is the confocal imaging. So, compared to the conventional microscope, the difference is there's a pinhole. In, in front of the detector. This pinhole rejects the light from all of focal, uh, all of focus object plane. To achieve a better performance, a pinhole is also needed in the illumination path. But if you use a laser, that, that is not necessary. So, because there's a pinhole in front of the detector, so the confocal imaging is a point imaging system. You will need to have a scanning mechanism to create a 2D image or 3D image. So the simplest uh, scanning method is a stage scan. Uh, either a uh, stage or optic system is moved. And the most commonly used system is a beam scan system. So use a, a scanner to scan the uh, focus spot across the sample. Uh, fiber optic scan is also an option, especially in the endoscope. So what is the requirement on a, on an imaging system? Fluidic operation is always the first uh, operation you need to consider. It is uh, on axis operation. You have to minimize for all scanning mechanisms. So also uh, fluidic operation, you have to be very careful because even you have a perfect design, but when, if you don't consider the tissue thickness and the refractive index, when you scan uh, in, into the tissue, and this tissue will introduce the fluid operation as you can see here. This is, for example, your object design as a perfect system in the air. But when you scan the entire tissue, you can see the fluid operation. So coma, as you mentioned, distortion and field curvature are of axis operation. So the collection highly depends on your uh, application. If your system is a stage scan, so you don't need to consider uh, this four type of operation. So, but if it is of axis scan, for some beam scan or fiber scan, you need to minimize each of them. The distortion is very different. So, it doesn't block the imaging. It, so, it is less critical in tissue imaging it, because tissue, as we discussed, it is compliant, so it moves. But if tissue is fixed on a slide, then you need to, you need to uh, minimize your uh, distortion. Similarly, it's a field curvature. If you like, um, have a tissue imaging during a surgery or uh, for small animal imaging, so field curvature is not necessary to, um, to reduce to a very small level uh, as long as the uh, uh, curvature is, the set is smaller than your depth of field. But if the tissue is fixed on a slide and your application is for this, then you have to minimize your field curvature because at that time, tissue doesn't move. Chromatic aberration, so for a stage scan, you only need to uh, minimize the actual chromatic aberration, but for in scan or other scan, you need to minimize the uh, co like a lateral chromatic aberration. So here is one of the example. So let's go to the uh, light tours. <laughs> Let, let's go to the remix. Here is the Stage scan with uh, for the 
the uh, object for state scan. So it is a CD objective. So uh, just we use use that for uh, comfortable imaging application. So as you can see here, this is uh, only two ASIC surfaces. So very simple. So if you look the um, point spread function, so you can see it has a very good performance. So one unique uh, feature you can use in here is the uh, uh, cycle energy. So so you know how much light is with uh, how much energy within certain size, especially in the detection path. So I will discuss in next uh, example. So for this one, only work for example for confocal fluorescent imaging. So excitation uh, S6, S635, you can have a very good you know, focal point, a very small focal point. So for the detection, because it is used for confocal fluorescent image, so you need to work on a different wavelengths. So the turbulence, as a doubly turbulence is used to minimize the uh, chromatic aberration. Here is the example. So as you can see here, so double is used to minimize the uh, chromatic aberration. So as I mentioned earlier, so uh, deflection in cycle energy is very useful because you know your pinhole size. So you, you can estimate how many percentage of the light uh, is within this pinhole size. And also this in cycle energy or in square energy is useful when you design a system uh, for CCD or CMOS imager because that's the uh, square typically the pixel is square so you can you can change to the uh, in square energy so that that's a very useful feature um, in comfortable imaging system so let's back to the presentation so here is another example a fiber scan. So fiber scan is not the flat surface for fiber locals. It's not flat surface. You, so you, when you design this system, you need to know the uh, radius of this fiber uh, scan locals. Also, you need to control your chip rate. So that the chip rate is like, like a, um, in the same direction as the fiber in each field view. So uh, let's see uh, the example. So this is a very complicated lens. I use here only for uh, to demonstrate the concept. For example, here, as you can see here, the so object is not flat. As, uh, as you can see here, I put a 10 millimeter uh, as the radius of this uh, uh, like fiber uh, tip. So also, as you can see here, the chip rate is converged, the chip are converged to the TV point of the fiber scan. So how to do that, uh, to control that, you can put a dummy surface here, um, and then in a, a MATIC function, you control the a rate high, as you can see here. So you control the rate high here, so that the, each shift rate uh, converge here, so that you can have a best performance in light efficiency. So of course, this, is, uh, this example is very, uh, very uh, complex, but I uh, show you how to design a bubble scan system. Also, as you can see here, I also control the uh, chip rate angle in the tissue stuff. So that's, uh, that's another way to uh, control the chip rate angle. And let's back to the uh, presentation. So bubble bundle uh, are commonly used in the endoscope, confocal endoscope. So what's different? What's the unique feature of the fiber bundle? So for the objective, you need to design as a telecentric in, in uh, fiber bundle size. So if it is not, as you can see on this uh, figure, so less light will couple into the fiber. And also, there is no uh, light in the, uh, in the center of the actual here, as you can see here. So just like uh, the system, the center part is broken. It is broke. So that your performance is staggered uh, if you look at them here. So there are two problems if the system is not present. Less light uh, is covered in, into the fiber and the performance is backward. So less uh, telecentric is a requirement for the fiber bundle imaging system. 
Um, here's uh, another example. So I will uh, let's go to the um, CMAX. So here is the here is the example of the uh, uh, convoke objective for fiber uh, bundle uh, system. So as you can see here, uh, so it is uh, more like a symmetry system. So symmetry system has has an advantage um, because the operation on each half can be compensated, compensate each other. Also, I use the uh, in cycle energy to estimate how the potential of the energy uh, inside the fiber, so you can estimate. So, as I mentioned earlier, fiber in tissue side is better to have a telecentric because uh, you scan inside the tissue. In the fiber side, you also need to have a um, telecentric to get a better performance. So this system is a double telecentric system. So in the imaging side, I already showed so you can control the ray angle in, in a metal function editor to minimize the uh, truth angle. In the object side, so you can specify here telecentric object space. This is how you can um, design a double telecentric system. Of course, you can um, like a control a truth angle here. Uh, in the object side as well, but this is more convenient. Let's discuss the uh, uh, endoscope system. There are a number of the uh, endoscope system, well, like uh, from like uh, the simplest, the earliest, uh, like uh, rich endoscope, and then fiber endoscope, video endoscope, uh, and also the uh, wireless endoscope, like capsule endoscope. So here is the optical principle. So for the fiber uh, endoscope, you need to have fiber bundle to relate the image to the eyepiece. So we already discussed the requirement of a fiber bundle on the sixth uh, objective. For a rich endoscope, you can see there's a relay uh, stage here. Uh, for a video endoscope, so the um, sensor is put on the distal end. So you don't need a relay stage. Capture endoscope, so here's the sensor. Uh, the system, as you can see here, is very simple, because, not because of the requirement is simple because of the space. So here is the requirement on a telecentric system. So for the fiber endoscope, we already discussed, we need to have a telecentric in the fiber end. But for rich endoscope, we also need a telecentric system. So on the top figure, show that the, uh, the object is telecentric. So uh, all the light will couple into the relay lens. If it is not, so as you can see here, so some of the light cannot enter the relay lens. After several stages, so your the performance will be like a degrade significantly. So for an objective lens in endoscope, uh, because it's inside the body, so you want to see uh, as large area as possible. So typically field of view is large. So um so that means um, you need to use like a either landscape type lens or the lateral focus. So one of the common problems for both systems is the system is not symmetry. That means collection of the lateral chromatic ablation, distortion, and coma is more challenging. So here is one of the examples. So a very simple example. So I will show you here. So it is, a, it is designed as a present uh, in a fiber uh, bundle space. So the reason, one of the reasons to put an image plane on the, the surface of the lens is you can attach the fiber bundle to, to this lens. So you don't need to control the distance between the fiber bundle and the lens. So you just glue it there. So as you can see, um, the performance so is not really good. So because you put the uh, ablation very well and also from the like a spot diagram, there there is a significant um, lateral chromatic operation. Mm. So if you need to see, is there another uh, like a tool you can use to estimate how the, the percentage of the uh, energy inside the uh, fiber. So the performance is not to actually discuss that uh, understandable because you only use a three three single single here. So uh, also, so we control the triple angle in here. Uh, so you can you can uh, see the triple angle is smaller 
is small. So in order to increase the performance, you can add the uh, cement fabric to uh, reduce the uh, chromatic vibration, and also you can add all more elements in the front group. So the system is more symmetry. Uh, so you can compensate the uh, vibration. As you can see here, the, so this objective has a much better performance. So here is the uh, cement example. So, but of course, as you can see here, so chiefly, is uh, angle is not is not telecentric. So it cannot be used for which endoscope and a fiber endoscope. It, so it can only um, be used for the video endoscope, a CC or CMOS here. But as you can see, from the performance uh, is much better. So for this case, because the CC or CMOS, so what it's better to change to the in square in square uh, energy. So you know the uh, each like uh, how many like the uh, percentage of the um, power in each pixel. So as I as I mentioned earlier, so um, biometric optical image is a very broad topic. Today we can only cover a um, few image modality, a uh, few fundamental of the image modality. So if you want to learn the more design principle or fundamental of the biometric imaging. So there's a book you can use as a reference. So that's what I have for today. So thanks for your interest. Okay, thank you very much, Ron. That was very interesting. I'm sure the audience appreciates it. So now I think we're ready for Q&A. There is a box down on your lower right-hand uh, corner that you can enter questions. And we'll just kind of take them as they come in and see what we get. And we do have a couple of questions queued up for you, Aaron. Okay, the first one, it looks like the first couple of questions are asking about design constraints. And the first one they want to know, are there any design constraints we should consider for the tube lens in the microscope design? So constraint is a uh, first, uh, you know, wavelength, the spectrum. So if you are working for a single wavelength, so that means you don't need to minimize the chromatic vibration. So for example, if you use a laser, so only single wavelength. So you actually, you don't even need to use a, a, a double. You can use a single. Of course, if you want to improve the performance, for example, like, a, uh, like to achieve a high image extra, you may use the uh, acoustic surface, for example, like a CD and the objective in a CD. Uh, so you can have a, a um, like the radical performance, but uh, you, you need to have a tr trade-off between the resolution and field view. So for the CD, uh, like an uh, objective in the CD reader, they can only um, like uh, read on on axis. So if it is off axis, the performance degrade significantly. So the content all depends on your requirement. Real curvature, uh, application control, uh, walking distance, and a space limit. So that's all, all the constraints. Okay, thank you, Ron. Now, uh, the next question, they, they, similar, they're asking about the design constraints for the uh, capsule style of endoscopes. Are there any special okay. constraints on that one? Yes. So that's very unique. So I have. Um, because uh, the constant layer is uh, the LED is inside a dome. That's, so there's a dome layer. So uh, as you can see, if I can see, um, go back to here. So you can see this is a dome, part of the optic system. LED is here. So that means you need to consider the uh, reflection, the illumination from these two sets because it may go in, into the detector, which is a very uh, severe problem. Just like if you, just like you uh, inside a house, for example, you turn off the light, and then you want to capture the street outside with use the flashlight. So most likely, you couldn't get a good image because the reflection from the window where damage your image. So that's one of the key constellations. 
Okay, excellent. Thank you. We have a couple of questions about the lens material. I'm kind of combining yeah. the questions. But they're asking about uh, any lens material limitations such as glass or plastic, and more specifically, do they use plastic elements in lens design for, for biomedical applications? Yes. Um, plastic uh, material uh, is more and more popular in medical imaging systems, especially for disposal. Disposable system. Um, so it's a, for several reasons. It's a lightweight, uh, it's much low cost because once you have a mold made, so the lens is very, very low cost. Maybe less than one dollar or less than fifty cents per lens because just a mold, that process. So what do you consider, what do you need to consider is the, uh, um, you are required for some cosmetic operation because there are much less choice in plastic elements. Also, um, you need to consider the first element because, for example, for endoscope, your first element always contact with water. So you need to uh, select a co plastic component so it's a more, it's less sensitive to water and also moisture or something. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Uh, there's another question about how you model tissues where there are changes in the surface or refractive index. So in optical design, for surface uh, topography, probably it's very difficult unless you know really the shape. You can you can use uh, like a particular surface. So by index, by what you can do is you can use the multi configuration. So for example, when you when you scan deep inside a tissue, so because the tissue thickness is different, or if your refractive index is different, so uh, you can use a multi configuration. So, um, so you can, uh, as you can see here, I, um, so where is the multi configuration? Uh, so that that's something you can use as a multi configuration and system. You could. Optimize the like a several computation simultaneous. Okay, excellent. Thank you for that. Here's one. Uh, is there a good way to avoid back reflection from the lens surface in your design? Uh, the simplest is to use the uh, AR coding. So let, uh, like I uh, get a very good uh, coding. Uh, of course, you could uh, do the stellar analysis. That's one of the uh, Function in ZMAX, you can do that to find out which surface is the like a uh, most uh, significant ghost image or like best uh, reflection. And then if you locate that, you could change the curvature. So another way to do it, so that's the um, in a quantum camera. So once they locate which surface and uh, which portion is this back reflection. They put a small black box there, so that to reduce the uh, like a back scatter, back reflection. So it's a case by case. Okay, excellent. We've got a couple more questions here. Uh, for the objective in the uh, fiber optical endoscope, what is the typical size outside diameter? Depends. For example, fiber fiber bundle usually is like couple. So lens is uh, a little larger. The three millimeter, I see the two millimeter objective um, because all depends on the field of view. So if, if you want to have a large field of view, your lens has to be larger. If you, if you can like, sacrifice your field of view, you can reduce your uh, objective, in the size of the objective. So two millimeter to five millimeter is, is, is feasible. So if you want to go to one millimeter, then you need to have a lot of effort. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Here's a follow-up to the uh, lens reflection uh, question. Would two reflections uh, be acceptable? Is that generally acceptable? Hard to say. It depends on uh, what the person is. For example, if you have a one, even have one reflection, but your reflection is very strong compared to the image. That means you you blow your image. Even as a one reflection, your objective is useless. So. You, or for another case, if you have 10 reflection, 10 very tiny 
that um, even you see the reflection of the percentage of the uh, light that is the image is very small, then even 10 or more is not an issue. All depends on relative, uh, like a strong, for example, it, uh, like a how much percentage, how many percentage of the line relative to your image. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Here's another question about modeling tissues in a Z-Max for absorption, diffusion. Are there existing mm -hmm. models, or how do you how do you actually model the tissue? Uh, let's go. Question for you. <laughs> um, uh. Your friend has a good answer here. Yeah. For the for the uh, illumination side, for example, you can you can once you know the um, tissue property, you can build a better volume better um, you know illumination function in Zmax. So that's one way to do. So I did not do uh, uh, in uh, like a like a simulator like tissue scattering in Zmax. So I don't have a good answer. Maybe. You guys in Zmax have a better answer. Okay, mm -hmm. we do have some models in uh, in Zmax to help us with tissues to, to model them, but but mm -hmm. uh, it is a very very uh, difficult science at times. Okay, here's another question for you about the proper uh, NA in objective lenses, since it relates to the depth of focus. What is the proper NA for your objective lens? So it's very broad question. So. We need to know uh, what application. It's a, like a microscope objective, or it's like an endoscope, or it is an objective for OCT, so or for a uh, fluorescent image. So um, depends. So any, for example, for fluorescent image, uh, you don't really uh, actually you want to have a large NA for fluorescent collection, but with the limit space or limit like. Um, how do you want to be able to minimize operation for that NA? But if you don't care about the solution, you care more about the fluorescent uh, collection, so you can increase the NA. But if you want to really have a good, good uh, resolution, and then you, then you have to care for when you increase your NA, because the system will be more complicated. Like that's the fear. That's the focus will be smaller. But for for fluorescent, maybe you, for tissue image, probably that is not a, not a real uh, important. So all depends on your requirement, what application. So that's that's very difficult to answer if we don't know what is the application, what is the requirement. Okay, good. Thank you. Now here's one uh, much more specific. They're looking for suggestions for lens systems for uh, OCT imaging with a working distance of around 300 millimeters while minimizing aberration and field curvature. So they're just kind of looking for suggestions for lens systems. OCT usually your NA is not large, or your point one. So I think probably it should be sufficient. Okay, excellent. That was a good one. Here, here is one last question. It looks like on manufacturing that maybe you can help us with. They have an objective with many C cement and acromats. If the OD is two to three millimeters, it's challenging to manufacture. So, what's the low limit for outside diameter for manufacturing cement cemented acromats? I think the point eight millimeters. I see some company can make as small as point eight millimeters. So, but of course, the, the manufacturer cost will be very high. Oh, yes, good point. Well, thank you, Ron. That looks like all of the questions we have. There is one that just, just jumped in, so we'll, we'll handle this one last question, and then we'll have to the call it a morning or afternoon, wherever you may be. Do you have anything special to minimize uh, spectral effects when using a laser? This is not a... Uh, um, if what you can do in a lens design, so you have to uh, manipulate your lines of either use rotate, rotating uh, scatter plate and to minimize like uh, to reduce coherent lens. So also you can use a low coherent like a slice of for for example like a low band laser source. So if it, it is a co coherent laser source, so only way you can do it is to use the coherent lens before the line is launched into the 
objective. So nothing we can do in objective in the, in the lab system. Okay, Axel, thank you very much, Ron. And it looks like all the questions we have today. And thank you very much, uh, everyone, for attending. If uh, you have an additional question, you can go to support at zmax.com, and uh, we can try to help you out there. Or for more information, you can go to our website at www.zmax.com. Mm -hmm.